Hi, it's Dan from Bocane Designs, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up the SiteGround security plugin. And this plugin is only ideal if you're hosted by SiteGround. If you're hosted somewhere else, I would recommend using WordFence. That's just my opinion, uh, but let's go ahead and start. So I've logged into WordPress. I've come to my plugin screen. I'm going to click Add New, and we're going to search for SiteGround Security. Click install now and then just click activate once it's installed. After you activate the plugin, go to the left sidebar and click on SG Security. This will bring you to the home page, which gives you a quick overview of everything going on. So you can see what IP addresses have been trying to log in, where they visited your website, who has registered, uh, little things like that. And then there are two main things you can do from here. One is manage your security. So let's click on manage security. And this is going to have options enabled by default. It's very straightforward. Uh, basically locking system files and folders will prevent certain exploits from happening. Uh, hiding your WordPress version makes it a little bit harder for people running automated attacks to scan sites looking for vulnerable versions of WordPress to attack. Uh, disabling theme and plugin editor just makes it so those files are harder to edit. If somebody gains access to your WordPress admin uh, as an editor, an author or something, they won't be able to get into things that they shouldn't be able to get into. And if you ever need to turn this off, you just come back here and click the toggle and that'll let you edit your files from WordPress again. Uh, disabling the XML RPC as well as the uh, RSS and Atom feeds is recommended if you don't use a blog and you don't use any third party connectivity. Um, in this case, this website might connect the store to Google Shopping and that RSS feed would be needed. So we're going to leave this off and then just leave advanced uh, cross site attacks off uh, the XS, XSS, leaving that enabled. And then finally, WordPress has a default readme file. It's an HTML file that you don't really need to have anyway. So click delete. Next, we're going to go to login security over here on the left sidebar. And there's a few options in here. We can change the WordPress admin screen to something different. And this just makes it harder for somebody to brute force. If they can't find your login screen, how are they going to log in? Um, it doesn't make your login invisible. Keep that in mind. But it does make it harder for somebody to find. So you can change WP admin to just dash store, dash your company name, anything you wanted. Login access will let you do uh, limitation by IP address or IPs like multiple. So if you and your business partner are the only people who need to log in, you could put your home IP and your office IPs in this tool and it'll block everyone else from connecting to the site uh, admin area. The next option is for two-factor authentication. And if you have a mobile app that generates a code every, every 60 seconds or so, that's what this is for. And this way, even if someone has your username and your password, they can't log in unless they have your phone as well to uh, accept two-factor as a third um, and this can be done by QR code so basically when you click when you enable this you'll be able to see a QR code and scan it with your device and set things up that's a little bit harder to demo in a video uh, screen capture the next one is just being able to, to disable common names they've done this for you but basically you know they've added names like admin administrator things like that to prevent people from creating users like that on your website and then limiting login attempts a lot of people have this plugin that does this for you um, you might as well get a plugin that does a lot more than just limit the logins so in this case this will block people after five hour or after five failed attempts it'll block their ip and if they continue to fail, it'll block them for longer and longer. So you can see if the first block is an hour, the second block will be 24, and then for a whole week. Once again, there's an activity log, which just shows you what has been going on, what IPs are doing what, who's logging in, who's signing up, who's getting blocked. And you can even have it send a weekly report to you by email if you don't want to check this on your own. And then this is the kind of a neat feature that they offer that I haven't seen on a lot of other plugins at all, really. But if your site gets hacked, this tool will go to the WordPress.org plugin list and 
reinstall fresh copies of everything that's in there. It'll also force reset of the password of all your users and log everyone out of the website. So this is kind of a get the hacker out, get everything that can be replaced, replaced as quickly as possible, force everyone to change their passwords. And then if you have premium plugins or any premium themes, you would need to restore those yourself. Uh, no plugin can do that bit for you, but this is a nice way to jumpstart your you know, malware cleanup process.